Hey guys, you all know the story of Goldilocks and the three minis. I, I mean Goldilocks and the three bears, right? She sneaks into their house, she eats some of their food, she breaks some of their stuff. I come to think of it, Goldilocks sounds like a real piece of shit. She was also kind of, well, spunky. Well, anyway, here's the mini for Goldilocks. You're with Mr. Chia, I'm Julian, and today we're going to find out all about the mini Ace Man. So the Ace Man completes Mini's new model lineup. It's bigger than the Cooper and smaller than the Countryman. Mini calls it an urban crossover with five seats and five doors, and it sort of replaces the Clubman, which was cool but didn't sell all that well. And it definitely has nothing to do with the Pace Man, which is a car you don't remember because it was a total flop. So unlike the Cooper and the Countryman, there is no combustion version of the Ace Man, and there never will be. So if you don't know what to do with this thing, well, you can just stop watching now. Oh, don't wait, don't stop. I need the views and I need the subscribers as well. So you know what to do. Be a good guy. Thank you very much. So since this is the Goldilocks Mini, let's just jump straight into the size. Now this is actually a little bit shorter than the Clubman was and shorter than the Volkswagen Golf. The length is just over 4 meters and the car is this wide and by this I mean 1.75 meters which is my arm span. The wheelbase is 2.6 meters and in terms of height, this car is only 1.5 meters tall. So this is why when I stand next to it, I kind of feel like Jason Momoa. So the urban crossover thing is why it has these huge plastic wheel arches over here. And if you look at the wheels, they go from 17 to 19 inches. And of course, Goldilocks would say, well, 18 is just right. But come on, look at this. Who wouldn't want more inches? If you look at this shape here, it's like a cliff over here. And at first it looked a bit weird, but now that I think about it, if it was a sort of normal curve, I would think it'd be less character. And it leads down to this interesting bit over here. So this bit, I think, is here to keep things in proportion. Remember, this is an electric car and all the batteries sit underneath the car. And this has the effect of kind of narrowing the waist of the car a little bit. So without this, this would look like it had way too much fish and chips to eat. Now, be honest, you could tell this is a Mini just by looking, right? It has that hexagonal grille, although it's not really closed at the bottom. You have that kind of skid bar over there or skid plate down there, very macho looking. And of course, if you're wondering about the headlights and why they're not round, well, I asked the designer and he said, well, this isn't a Mini Cooper, so it doesn't have a Mini Cooper's headlamps, but it does have some family resemblance. And I also think that on a car this size, round lights would have been a little bit too cartoony. By the way, if you want something more sportive, as they say in Germany, then you can consider this version with the black wing mirrors and black roof. It's called Favourite Trim, and that's Favourite with a U, by the way, spelled the British way. But I think it's super fascinating how the roof starts out white over here and then kind of blends into blue as we go to the back of the car. It's just one of those details that makes this car just that little bit more visually fascinating. And yeah, over at the back, I bet you could tell this was a Mini. Like, there's a lot of mininess going on here. Union Jack tail lamps, of course. But you know what? It actually all happens up here. And to me, this kind of almost looks like a Mini that's sitting on top of something. And of course, that something is all those batteries, which again is nicely kind of disguised by this skid plate over here. So taking a look at the boot, now the numbers here are easy to remember. It's an even 300 litres with the seats up and 1,005 litres when you fold them down. And that's counting space under the floor, but you can lower the floor to have a bit more versatility. And let me show you what I mean with the help of a little comic I call The Adventures of Nigel and Mary. Oh, Nigel, that'll never fit. Oh, just you wait and see. Oh, my. <laughs> I can put it in this way too. Oh. Oof, it's tight, but I can push more in. Oh. Oh, I never thought it did get in. But look! Oh, it's bloody huge, but it's all the way in! I think I need to lie down now. Okay, so I do want to point out that there are no grocery hooks over here or there. So, you know, you're going to leave the store with these bags of fruit and you're going to go home with a fruit salad. But you know what? I have to say that this is actually bigger than the five-door hatchback's boot. And for a time, that was the best-selling Mini in Singapore. So, I don't think this is a deal-breaker, even though it's not very big. Something else that's not very big, the battery. So there's two versions of the Mini Ace Man. Ace Mans, there are two Ace Men, 
I don't know. Anyway, there's the Ace Man E, which is the basic one that has a 38.5 kilowatt hour battery, and that's good for a range of up to 310 kilometers. But you know what up to means, right? You have to turn off all the air conditioning, shut down the entertainment system, and you probably have to eat hydrogen balloons for lunch. And then there's the Ace Man SE, which I'm driving now. That has a bigger battery. It's 49.2 kilowatt hours, and apparently that's good for up to 405 kilometers which is much better. Both of them though are NCM chemistry and that's actually more energy dense, but it's not the kind of battery you want to charge to 100% all the time. And you definitely don't want to go down to zero, right? So let's say you stick to an operating range of between 10 and 80%. It means that you probably have a range of around about 200 kilometers in the Ace Man E before you're going to want to stop and charge. And in the SE, it's probably going to be closer to 250. So for the Singapore driver, typically I think you would stop and look for electricity every four days in the Ace Man E and maybe every five days in the SE. At least they charge up pretty quickly. The Ace Man E has a maximum charging rate of 70 kilowatts and that's enough to take you from 10 to 80% in just 28 minutes. The Ace Man SE can charge at 95 kilowatts. So if you can find a charger that's fast enough, you can go from 10 to 80 in 31 minutes. Let me throw some more numbers at you guys. So the Ace Man SE has 218 horsepower and the peak torque is 330 newton meters from zero RPM. If you want to go for the Ace Man E, well, that actually has less horsepower, but in Singapore it's been detuned further. So elsewhere it's 184 horsepower, but in Singapore it's going to be 110 kilowatts to slip into category A. So just some early driving impressions guys, this is a quiet car of course, it is electric and it is kind of lively but I wouldn't say it's fast. I mean 218 horsepower is quite a lot but you know it weighs 1.7 tons and I can remember when a 7 series used to weigh uh, you know around the same. But you know it does have that instant response to the accelerator pedal because of the electric motor so I think it's fun enough for that reason. And in terms of driving position, well, you are in a kind of crossover, so you actually sit sort of elevated, maybe a little bit higher up than you would in a hatchback. And because of that, the visibility is good, and you don't feel like you're going to be bullied by the other road users. As for the suspension, I'd say it's actually pretty firm, but it's not uncomfortable. So it feels like they've made the springs pretty firm, but the damping has actually been pretty well sorted, because if you hit a bump, you will feel it, but the car doesn't move around a lot after that. And in terms of the handling, well, I quite like it actually. It's a definitely a nimble car and it has that small car agility. And you know, as I kind of go through a couple of corners here, I am feeling like you get quite a lot of feedback from the steering. And it's, I wouldn't say it's weighty, but you do, you do get a nice sense of what's going on underneath you and what the front wheels are up to. And you know, how that came about apparently is well, the suspension engineers all had a day where they all went to the track with a bunch of Coopers and Countrymen and apparently spent a day blasting around and they just wanted to answer one question. Should we make the Ace Man a little bit more like the Cooper, that means fun to drive, or more like the Countryman, that means more comfortable? And they all agreed apparently that it should feel a little bit more like the Cooper. So it does aim to have the kind of fun to drive factor of the smaller Cooper but with some of the comfort of the countryman. And really, if that was their goal, I think they nailed it. Something for the drivers in all of us, and that's go-kart mode. <laughs> Woohoo! And that's how it's supposed to make you feel. And straight away, I get more response from the accelerator. And the, the steering actually gets a little bit firmer and heavier as well. But you get all that sound. Listen to that. <laughs> and you know what? It doesn't unlock any more power and it doesn't make the car any faster, let's say. But I would say that it makes the car more exciting. And you know, electric cars can sometimes be a little bit dull because that is something missing when you drive one. And I think what is missing is that noise. And it's not just about noise, but it's a sense of mechanical effort from the motors. And you know what? Just by doing that, I think Mini has ended up making the car pretty delightful. Ooh, wheel spin. 
Another thing that makes this car delightful is the sheer amount of mininess inside. Of course, you have the 240mm round OLED screen that other drivers can see, and I kind of find it cluttered and confusing, but it's possibly because I'm rather old. You do, however, have a head-up display that shows you your speed and navigation info so you can always keep your eye on the road. Then you have a layer of controls in the form of these physical switches for the most important functions, including a kind of key for, well, not starting the car but switching it on, and you have an actual knob for the music volume. Yes! The seats are kind of lovely in terms of shape and all the piping and decoration. And everywhere you look, you'll find knitted material, again with decorations here and there. I think you'll either love or hate the dashboard material, but I like it because it looks good and it feels good. At the end of the day, this car is about three things. Colours, texture and textiles. And it's actually a bit of a break from the world of leather. And even though it doesn't quite feel as posh, I think it makes the car feel very modern and very progressive. And this dash actually takes inspiration from the outside world. In fact, this material over here has something in common with something that you could be wearing on your feet right now. Tesla is always a big uh, inspiration. When we saw the first knitted sneaker, uh, it was really inspiring for us. So actually the new knitted material is the perfect canvas. We wanted to transfer the new technology to automotive. We used knit for the very first time. It's also something new. And now we have a lot of textiles in it. It makes it really warm and cozy. I really love details. I love to design every single loop, every single thread, the stitchings on seats, and I think the customers can see it and they want to search for it. All right, so let's talk about storage for a moment, guys. And there's not a lot to talk about because there's not a lot of storage. So this is not a wide car and you don't have a lot of space between the front seats here. So you've got these open, I guess, cup holders here. They don't have the fingers. So if you put a bottle there, it's going to shake around a lot. You've got a tray here, wireless charging for your mobile phone. And then you've got this little box here, but this is the only covered um, storage space that you have. So this is where the Ace Man falls a little bit short. Let's open the dashboard and see. I've got a bottle of vodka in there. But otherwise, you know, there isn't a lot of space for odds and ends in this car. So good luck keeping it tidy. That's not a huge deal for me. What I really want to complain about, and I complain about this with all the new BMWs, is where's my aircon vent? So these two are actually for the front passenger and when it comes to me it's actually this slot over here and it's tiny it's like this big and this wide so this is supposed to supply me with lots of cold air in Singapore I can aim it with this little slider here but you know it kind of almost looks like someone forgot to put in an aircon van they put this here then this here and they're like oh no where do we put the aircon and they you know kind of found a place for it here Either that or they didn't forget and they deliberately made it so small. But either way, I feel like someone owes me an aircon vent. Well, speaking of aircon vents, somebody owes me some back here too because there's absolutely none. I mean, I really, really like my aircon vents. And you know, there is a panoramic glass roof over here. So there is a danger of overheating on a hot day, but you can, of course, cover this up with a sliding roof over here. Oh, and something I noticed when you're driving around in the dark is that these also light up. I wish I could show you now, but they actually look really, really nice. And they do a lot for the cabin ambiance. Let's talk about space for a little bit. I'm a bit conflicted because I kind of expected an electric vehicle to have a bit more room in the back. Now the batteries are underneath me, so my feet are resting on top of them. That's why my knees are so high, but I do have space a little bit under the front seat. I am sitting behind myself right now. I'm 1.75 meters tall for reference. And you can see that I do have a decent amount of knee room. I'm just going to slide over to the center now. And I just want to point out that even though a lot of electric cars have a flat floor, there's a tunnel over here and that creates a little bit of space for a bit more crap if you want to put it here. One cup holder, two USB-C charging ports. But, you know, it of course eats into your foot room. And if you're the middle passenger, you will be sitting a little bit higher than these guys. But you know what? I'm still okay for headroom, so I'm going to give that a pass. So overall, I would say that it's not as spacious as I expected it to be. But at the end of the day, I think this does have a lot more room than something like the Cooper 5-door hatch. And I think it's actually a little bit more spacious than something like the Lexus LBX, which is another small car that I like very much and which sells for a very similar price. 
Which brings me to the Ace Men's pricing. So I filmed this in early October, so I don't have the exact prices, but if you put a gun to my head, I would say the Ace Men SE is probably gonna cost around $230,000 with a category B COE. Although why you would put a gun to my head for that reason, I really don't know. The Ace Man E will probably set you back around $210,000 with a category ACOE. And my prediction is that with that sort of price gap, the SE is going to be the bigger seller by far. Okay, now put the gun away. So at the end of the day, it's one thumb up and one down for the Goldilocks Mini. Thumbs up because, well, this is a fun car to drive. It's agile, it's got a lot of character, and it's just delightful to sit inside. And when you drive it, well, it makes you smile. And that is what I think makes it a true Mini. And the thumbs down part is because I think it could use more range. This is supposed to be an urban car, but it's always nice to have the option to leave town from time to time. And even if you only ever drive the Ace Man in Singapore, well, more range equals more convenience. So for that reason, I would recommend skipping past the Ace Man E and buying the Ace Man SE instead. So that's my professional opinion. Who cares what Goldilocks thinks? And most of us lived happily ever after. So that's my quick and dirty look at the Mini Ace Man. If you want to know more about this car or any new car in Singapore, WhatsApp me at the number below and I'll do my best to help you out. We also have other videos, but thanks for watching this one. See you again.